All right, ladies and gentlemen, got your watches coming into November 8, 2019. And today we're going to talk about how we just turned $40 into $2,200, give or take a little bit or a lot more, depending on what happened. And at the end of the day, it's just another play parlayed. We also hit our Qualcomm earnings. If you guys have been watching these watch lists and come on on stream, it is paying dividends. But I want to go over these plays, what we did, how we handled these moves. We were up 7,000 bucks on Qualcomm on one point. We're walk we walked away with like 3,000 by the end of the day in the move. And we changed our whole risk around. We played this Expedia's. And we really smashed this. I even talked about this. And I want to talk about the criteria a lot more because I think it's got a lot of people's attention now. But even moving forward, we need to look at how we're going to be finding other plays now that earnings is wrapping up. But there is something very unique going on in the options market. So I'm going to go over all of this stuff. I got a few of the keys for tomorrow. And tomorrow is going to be a froggy Friday. So we got a lot more plays to hunt for. Even though we focused on a lot of these plays today, a lot of the continuations and stuff we were looking for, you know, again, if you guys been watching the watch list, remember we were talking that Google breakout and wait and push it to the wall. Those went up 3000% today. Those were kind of a sleeper, but still some overall big moves. And here is the main thing, you know, got the keys for tomorrow and all that. And you guys make sure you post your watch list. That's the most important thing you need to do. But if you want the simple part, how do you turn that $40 or how do we turn $40 into 2000 Come on stream, baby. You can watch it live. This is the stream from yesterday. You see Expedia is trading at 131. This is before earnings. You guys could take a listen, please. Oh, wait, you see that? Look, he's putting in the order. Oh, blue doop. And then I got a 121. Dang, oh man, right when it, right when it happens. You can see the chat and everything. Look at going through. Oh, man, we, we hooked that one up. That was right there. So make sure you guys are there. We're live Monday through Friday, 30 minutes before open. I spent 90 bucks. I got a... Boom. Listen to it. November 15th, 147 call, 121 put. So there it is. If you guys are on stream, you could see we did all the we do all of these plays live we've been talking about the qualcomm we've been putting them on the watch list and even there you could even hear me type in there we also have the stream alerts too that's if you don't miss it so remember they're not trade alerts if something happens on stream like you just saw it's right there but tune in and you guys are there the best part was that one was one that you could see in real time but we did mention that on some of the past watch lists this week and we i did talk about expedia in relation to booking remember booking had its earnings today they even shot up but we we're saying it's a little too expensive so we went there but there's a few things to learn with this play but it's kind of putting everything full circle really these last few weeks we even hit that a net last week that was thirty dollars into three thousand now this play it topped out those 121s where they're at now november 15th remember we bought those for 40 they're chilling today at 2300 so we sold out of those today and you guys could see here now this was that play that you guys saw live right there. We bought the call. Then I got the put, the 121. Remember, we, we closed out some of the Qualcomm. Isn't that sad? That would have made our gain. We would have been up like twelve or 14000 if I didn't sell those. But everything worked out in its favor. And I think even having smaller Qualcomm position helped me play that. But we'll go over that. But then you see, we, we bought that a few hours before close. We woke up the next morning day. We sold at twelve fifty. So I cashed out at twelve fifty when it was at 108 And then... You can see here, I bought three of the November 15th, 95 puts. So I got those at 40 cents each. I spent 120. Here they are now. And those are going for 135 each. So we, I still able to roll over. These are worth like what? $400 now. So I made about $1,500 total from my $40. But if I held the other contract, we could have been up 2,200. Now that is part of the strategy here. And people even ask, cause now we had this play and then we also had Qualcomm. And on Qualcomm, I sold premium. On this case, I sold out and then I bought another contract. Those are the two ways to handle some of these moves. You could either sell the play, walk away when you hit one of these big movers. You could sell it and then buy a cheaper play either the same or different day. I was going to buy the weekly and this is where I'm pissed because you guys could see right here. When do we buy that? 641. So 11 minutes into the market, I wanted these 100 puts. Oh man, I don't even want to look at it. Yeah, I remember they, they went from 30 cents to 60 cents. That's literally right when they took off. You could literally see when we bought it. But that's when I was like, ah, I was like, I was going to get these for 30 cents. I was going to get like five of them. But I was like, nah, never mind. I can't. They already jumped up to 60. They're going to be weeklies. It's not worth it. So I wanted time. But you're seeing the difference there because this one was five. The other, this is five dollars closer. This one went in the money. If I put that 120 bucks into these and got two of these, 
that would have netted us 500 or even more instead of that 400 but in the other case we have time so I did that then I sold premium on it but now let's get to answering the main question now how did we find that again <clears throat> so again watch the live stream again the live channel first link in the description it's pinned in the comments but the main part was this strategy we're talking standard deviations and now we saw this happen and this is going to be actually one of the biggest keys moving forward either for the rest of the day as well as the week so maybe I'll get over these so we could explain it but it's criteria and pricing and now this is important for how we found this and this is why I, I really recommend you guys go watch the past watch list too to get a better understanding about this because we keep talking about it but uh, but it's better to see it as it progresses day by day because none of these plays you required any crazy timing you know we were screaming them from the rooftop we you know we were days ahead on all these talking about it and there's something going on with pricing and if you're finding a unique set within the options chain and now the key is here though earnings is over and there's only going to be a couple more moves that will be inspired by earnings that could cause this but there's something going on with pricing i think it's messed up and we're going to start seeing this reflected with other plays so i have this for other plays to look at tomorrow but now moving forward though but that key criteria we were looking for quite simply was that you could it's you're not going to see it as much here it's actually doing it it's funny it's actually doing that here on the november 15th contracts at this new pricing it's literally even how expedia looks now so i, I mean i'd even get ready for a big bounce but the difference is there's no earnings or other catalyst but the key is finding a stock where the market is pricing in a 75 percent move of the step one standard deviation so on both sides, you see here, this this gray is what the market is pricing in. So based on the at the money straddle, so if someone bought a, a 95 and then sold the 95 or bought the 100 and sold the 100, they're spending on the premium just to break even is this gray shaded area. And now if this gray shaded area is such a wide range, aka there's a lot of IV, the higher the IV, that is part of the criteria because it's saying the market is asking, the market thinks there's going to be a big move with the stock. So the goal was though, finding something pricing in big like this, but now the next question should be, isn't that overpriced? Isn't that the case then? If the market's pricing in a lot, wouldn't that mean it's overvalued, too expensive to buy in? Yes. So what makes the criteria we're looking for that makes it have a good deal is that the at the monies or near the monies are expensive and price in a big move. But then once you start getting further out the money, they start getting cheaper and then it's something that could realistically hit. So the key was having a 75% move priced in and then being able to get still one and a half or two standard deviations here, one and a half, two standard deviations. But pretty much you wanted to be in this block right here for the price of three standard deviations so which is pretty much 30 to 50 dollars because again the lower or higher you spend that's determining your risk or potential yield or return to a degree so that's what we did and you could even see the same thing now we use this same criteria for some of the other earnings and we played disney today too we grabbed a 142 and now this is going to be one to watch tomorrow we already hit this play so it went up to 140 141 almost this is looking just like qualcomm so watch for even a continuation move like Qualcomm, but this met the criteria. That's why if you even look at Disney here, take a look, where's our call? The curve has moved now because even though it's saying 130, that's the closing price, but now this, this curve is showing where the stock is, that 140. You could see now at one point, this was literally just one standard deviation outside the money, one and a half. Now we're in the money. And that's what was going on with Disney. Disney was very expensive, but I actually, I got the November 8th on there. It would have worked better with time on it, but then you could kind of see here, why did I get this exact price? It had to do with the pricing of it. So even though these at the monies, these 130s were really expensive and it was pricing a six, $7 move both ways, the minute you started getting you know, $10 out of the money, which was only a standard deviation and a half, the prices started to get reasonable there. So that is that was literally the whole key with the strategy. And now we've been saying, watch this criteria it is worked across the board, but now there's other times like TTD in this case. We played this one as well too. We went both ways on it. I think this one could be a continuation to watch as well tomorrow too, but it was pricing in a lot, but then it moved in line with the pricing, meaning the contracts were overpriced. And this one was harder because you had to spend more money to get within two standard deviations. But then same thing here with Stamp. We grabbed like a 103 call on there today or 113. So we're super far out and again, these are a little bit more illiquid, but watch how that one plays out tomorrow. But it was the same same logic here, and now the stock's going to be around 
90, 100, we're going to be right still within one standard deviation. So you're seeing how the key is to spend a little bit amount of money to get the price in move. But then again, stamps and TTD were a little bit more expensive because this thing still went at 15%, but we were still out the money. We, we Whereas we got a little closer with Disney, but all in all, the key is seeing the signal from the market makers, finding an option chain where the IV is, is high and they're charging a lot at or near the money. And, but you're still able to get slightly further out the money where it starts getting cheaper. There's going to be a point where the contracts start tapering off in price, even if it's really expensive. But then if it gets too expensive, you're seeing it's not really worth it to play. So at the end of the day, we've seen with all these plays, if you just constantly are going for some of these and control the budget and do 30, 40, 50 bucks, and then one of them hits like Expedia, Anet, those two right there is five grand off of like $50 or something stupid or $90. You could just go out for these, but you'll get caught up. You know, I spent 320 on stamps. We lost on that or TTD. We spent 90 bucks on stamps and then $60 both way on Disney. So we'll see if Disney hits or not, but you're seeing how all that's playing out. So watch all those. And then finally, we had Qualcomm to wrap up the plays we did today. Now, I thought this one was very interesting and some of you guys might be curious. You see total, it says we're down 350 on it because it was going back and forth in terms of the calls but remember we sold off 50 yesterday and we took about a thousand or sixteen hundred dollars profit before the earnings but then take a look at what it's saying here qualcomm my trade price is in parentheses negative 1875 that means i've collected money to make this trade now so even though i didn't sell these contracts i now set myself up in a win-win position because now you're seeing here i'm only up 1300 on the contracts that's pretty much what we were up on them yesterday before the earnings but now I'm up 26.25 on this. So what did I do during the day when Qualcomm was running up right in the morning? We waited 20 minutes. It started going up. I sold 25 of these at 65 cents, collected like 1500 bucks or something. And then it kept going up and I sold this, you know, I got another 50% on this and I sold 25 at $84. So there I sold 50 contracts and I sold 50 of the 94s we own the 92. So I turned by owning these at such a low price and these going up in value, I turned this to a credit spread, but it's a debit spread. Meaning if it hits the 94, I'll guaranteed make money on this. But now that I, these were such a high price, I sold these for $3,700. So I collected that premium. Whereas if it doesn't go to 94 and I lose on these, these are going to guaranteed pay me out 3,700. So minusing the the price we spent on the calls and the initial investment on the puts and collecting this premium all in now i'm collecting 1875 so pretty much by the end of next week now if qualcomm stays below 9250 meaning this play loses it's not going to hit the 7250 puts that expire tomorrow everything goes wrong from here i'm still going to walk away with 1875 and then that 1600 bucks from yesterday so that is working out in our favor so it's a win-win no matter what, even if I lose. But now let's say it goes up and that's something we'll see. We saw with Qualcomm, it was all over the place. And pretty much even though Qualcomm dropped a lot, I was I started making money now. So you see by the time, although these up were at one point, these were up like four or 5,000. And that, that's what happened. The max gain we're up today on this was 7,000. So I did lose half of the gain so far because the stock dropped and it's kind of in that weird middle point. But regardless now why I like this play, because let's say Qualcomm does continue next week, it's allowing me to ride out such a large amount of contracts with 50, because with 50 contracts, if it did go to 94, the max gain I would receive is $7,000. So essentially, I'm getting paid to make this trade, but I'm getting paid a lot. Whereas if the trade fails and it doesn't continue next week or tomorrow and doesn't go past 9250 i still walk away with three grand 1875 plus the other money but now if it does go up i get to really ride the wave and, and ride these contracts at least to somewhat of a max potential and then i would make seven thousand dollars on these that's when these would start losing because again remember if it went up to 9250 or let's say even it closes by next Friday at 92. Think about how powerful this play could be. Or if it closes at 94, we make $150. That's the difference between these contracts per contract times that by 50. We walk away with $7,500. But then guess what? If it closes at 94 exactly, we also, these contracts will be worthless and we sold them for 3,700. So we'd make 11,000 bucks if it closes at 94 on the dot. But if it goes above 94, walk away with $7,000. And if it doesn't go below 94 now, or it stays below 92.50, we still walk away minimum 1,800 total. So 
that's how I made that play. That's how we're doing it. And hopefully you guys can now learn from this. If you are in any of these earnings plays, you could do the same thing with Qualcomm Expedia. If you hit these, it's how do you manage them and maneuver them from there to see, you know, playing the max up and downs because it was very easy even on Expedia to sell out and you could have sold at 1200 this morning and you don't know when it's going to slip another 10% throughout the day. This is why these earnings continuations are important. So you could set yourself up with this and too now for the next few weeks, these continuations are going to be important. So watch out for that and understand it. And now don't miss some of these other opportunities. We talked about these even with like Google and now the continuation on Roku that hit these contracts were worthless in the morning. Then they ran up. But that was a good opportunity. Same thing with Roku. But again, a lot of things kind of ended up coming down. But now even then watch all these tomorrow and now watch Shopify. This is now the last key of the day for you guys to watch. This will kind of explain what we did with all these plays. So again, congrats if you did good on that. Hopefully you guys walked away again. Doesn't matter if you made money or lose money. Hopefully you learned something. But tomorrow we're going frog hunting, boys. So if tomorrow is like today, there's going to be big opportunities where there's a lot of big individual movers. The continuations we saw are crazy. Push some of these to the wall and it might be better to spend a little bit to get in the money. And remember the strategy is spend a little bit to get in the money, but it might also be a little bit better to spend a little extra for an extra week. It's the earnings continuation. So that's why there might be good Friday plays. And I picked up a Boeing like 365 for 25 bucks today. People ask me why Boeing was up. It was hitting 359. It was inversing from Lockheed, but it was pricing in 20 bucks for like a $6 move on Boeing. Usually that's like a fair price on the weekly, but that was only for the next 24, 48 hours. But I'm going to watch Boeing tomorrow to see if it frogs given the spot it's at. But in general, with a lot of these plays now, it's either tomorrow's going to make big moves and now there's going to be a good opportunity to get really cheap contracts and they're all going to decay. So watch even booking and even any of these earnings continuations, even Qualcomm itself, we could snag those. But again, too, if some of these contracts are cheap, it's kind of the same thing. You need a catalyst with this pricing. That's the only issue. I know we're looking at, well, what's the criteria? How much is getting priced in? You know, Qualcomm still kind of has it right here. It's still pricing in a big move. But now what is the question of how do we actually play this? You need some sort of catalyst. So if the earnings continuation is actually still there, then this is telling you something. But again, just because it's making in a big pricing, if there's no catalyst. That means it's just overpriced. But if you're able to find that, there could be some big continuation moves and you could still get stuff a little slightly cheaper, control the balance. And then if they do make these continuation moves, you'll be surprised. So that's what I'm saying. Watch out for all of these companies that reported. Watch even Disney tomorrow. That's if Disney can move like Qualcomm did and go up another two to five bucks tomorrow. Some of those weeklies are going to be crazy to watch with Disney. But then now too, watch some stocks like Shopify. If they start making, you know, they had earnings a, a week or two ago, if they start continuing downwards, they're going to start doing their trend. And now the last set of plays I have McDonald's, Chipotle and Starbucks, uh, these restaurant stocks are all doing something. And now given where I said this earlier today, I said where the market's at, you could even see in the last year, there's markets that are all time highs. These things are kind of coming down to these weird equal equilibriums, you know, Chipotle, Starbucks, McDonald's. I might want to even look at some longer dated contracts here, or if they do break through, watch the bottom, but watch what these are pricing. But some of the out of money, out of the money contracts on plays like these with a little bit of time could be really good. So I'm going to be keeping my eyes out for those. Maybe you guys could run through and scan through and let me know what you think, but I'm going to be watching those. Shopify will be watching Google tomorrow as well for a continuation. And then lastly, TLT and then Bank of America. I don't watch stamps too. I think we talked about that. But Bank of America is going to be good as well. Watch the financials. I think these are the reason the markets are up to a big degree. A again, they're kind of reversing McDonald's, Starbucks and all that. So see how that's all coming in full circle and notice to what the market is doing. And again, we had a lot of conflicting trade news. We'll talk about that tomorrow on stream. This is more focusing on the plays here, but Either way, watch that and then TLT, but this has to do kind of with what happened today. The positive trade news, what happened with the dollar. There's been a big shift with the dollar and it makes sense why we're seeing, you know, kind of these moves at these levels and certain rotations because now if the trade deal and future concerns change drastically like they kind of are right now, the bond market is signaling something on the downside. This is crazy that it even moved like this. So we still have those Decembers. Those might be good if they if there is a bounce back. We probably are going to need to average down, but that's kind of my next move moving forward here. I want to identify some of these other industries and then also kind of pick up and, and be a little patient here, maybe sell some credit spreads until we start getting some volatility because this is going to give us an opportunity opportunity with how bonds are pricing and where they all go from there. But that is your watch list, ladies and gentlemen. Let me know what you think. I know it might have been confusing. There's a lot of stuff, but I think the best thing is watch some of the past watch lists. 
Come back on here, ask questions, and hopefully we see you on stream, baby. So make sure you're hydrated, healthy, ready to go. Be positive, be respectful. I'm going to see you on Frog Day Friday tomorrow. Be grateful. Stay grateful. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I'm proud of everybody who made money. And again, proud of all the people who kept their head up and always in the game, man. That's what it's about. So let's just keep it coming and close off this year and get ready, man. Got another week after that, another week after that, another week after that, another week after that, another day, another week, another year. You know, you get it, you get it. All right, let's go. <laughs>